someone posted a rather long comment on a very unrelated subject to what I'm doing this video about, but they posted this little chestnut, I'm going to call it. A star 200 light years away would have to be impossibly bright because of the inverse square law. Now, if you're not aware of that, that is a rule that applies to a lot of things, including sound. And if something is sufficiently far away with many things, not everything, but many things, its effect on the universe or on an observer over a long enough distance eventually equals zero. Now this is easily checked by just looking up at the sky at night and seeing that there's a lot of blank spaces in the sky, a lot of darkness. But you could set up a camera with a long exposure and eventually light from somewhere, maybe not from a star, but somewhere, will hit the film in that area. And if it consistently hits the same spot over and over again, we can assume, as axiomatic, it's coming from a star. You just have to sit there long enough for the chemistry of the film to show that dot, and then do multiple tests with multiple emulsions to detect it, to make sure it's not just noise. Same thing with charge coupled device cameras. You can point a camera at the sky that uses a charge coupled device. You charge this this detector, it's an individual cell on the on the grid. And you measure how long it takes for a single photon to hit it. That's it. And after that it's hit if it's hit by a certain number of photons, um, it just is it's been it's been saturated. That's all. And that's the whole thing. Is it it, it, the whole point is is that the reason we know we can see something 200 light years away or even further is simply because a photon reached us. We determined the distance by doing a bunch of other tests, but someone making an assertion that it can't possibly be 200 light years away because it would have to be, quote, impossibly bright, why would you assume a star has some upper limit to how bright it can get? And why wouldn't you understand that in many cases that star you're looking at is actually a galaxy filled with them, with plenty of light coming from every one of them. <clears throat> also, it should be noted, we're dealing with photons, packets of energy. They act like particles and waves in effect, but over very long distances, they eventually get to a certain minimum level they can't go below, and they act like a particle, until they run into something and get absorbed. And also, they can run into something like an atom, and then just be rebroadcast as a photon again. It might change in frequency, or it might lose some energy, but it will still be able to keep going. And it might even amplify it if, uh, in, in effect. It might fluoresce it. The point I'm making here is, there isn't any actual max limit to how far away a photon can travel, and our, our perception of brightness is just how many photons hit the area. <clears throat> Let's say it was far enough away that the photons arrived, even though they're going the speed of light, and normally because they're smaller than atoms, smaller than electrons, no, I can't, just smaller than atoms, that you could have a, a, a seemingly infinite number of them coming at you, because they're spreading everywhere, but let's say it's coming straight at you. Eventually, if it's far enough away, they are all coming straight at you for that instant. Let's say it dwindled down to enough of them being absorbed that you got one or two of them every one millisecond thousand times a second, it would look like a continuous bright light. What if you only got hit visually on your detector or your eye um, ten times a second? You would be able to perceive a fluttering ten times a second. Or a twinkling. Go outside and look at stars and see if any of them twinkle. It's actually caused mostly by the atmosphere, but some of them are intermittent light sources simply because they're just that far away. But there's a certain level where if you can detect light we perceive it as a certain brightness, and we can't perceive it as being half of that because it's sort of a quantification, quantum. That's one way of explaining this. But stars' luminosity, our estimates, show that they can be 0.01% um, of the brightness of the sun at the source, all the way up to 10 million times brighter than the sun at the source. And remember, again, a star is putting off a lot of photons covering a surface area of the entire star, and they're going off in every direction. And it's not just a photon and then it has to decay. It's a continuous stream of them coming from the star during the time it's in existence. Inverse square law applies to wave function of light as well, mostly to it, because like sound and everything else, it does decrease by halving every time you double distance. Okay, 
And even though that means that a star would have to be, you know, millions of times brighter than the sun, that doesn't mean that the light hitting here has to be zero. Also, a star doesn't have an upper limit. We could find another star that's more than 10 million times brighter than the sun. Also, um, this duality of a particle in a vacuum, because it could be that way, uh, it has, if it has nothing to lose energy uh, from it and it doesn't hit anything, the human eye can detect one photon of brightness as turning on the cones in our eyes. And uh, we have imagers that can detect very, very low intensity levels or low energy photons as well. If it was uh, every microsecond or so, it would look continuous. If it was fewer than that, it would be twinkling. A star's diameter, its actual brightness, the light color, intervening matter, the distance, and sensitivity of your eye or the solid state detector or film all affect perceived brightness limits that some are assuming here. One of the limits that's found is 6 times 10 to the negative 14th power watts divided by a steradian centimeter squared. Uh, but let's look at this. If one rod near sim simultaneously absorbed photons, what would it look like? This was the test that was done. Six photons equals very bright. Five is bright. Four is moderate light level. Three is dim. Two is slightly doubtful if a light was seen by the average person. And one is very doubtful if light was seen, but may be perceived. And then a dark adapted person, one photon hitting, one photon hitting uh, a rod would be seen as being not doubtful. Now what that means is, is that an average person, not me with bad, bad vision, um, would be able to detect one photon per rod. The difference between Earth's farthest and closest distance is 5 million kilometers. That doesn't make a major difference to our solar energy level reaching us because uh, it's 93 million miles from us to the sun and uh, you know 5 million kilometers isn't really affecting it that much. That does have an effect that should have a ratio level you know like having or, or, or you know something like that but human eyes and hearing and a lot of other characteristics are logarithmetic. Um, the difference between deafeningly loud and just barely perceptible aren't just a hundred units. You know, it's it's an amazingly large dynamic range. We adapt very much to reality. Reality is like that. The most distant object visible to the unaided, unaided eye to most human beings on Earth is the Andromeda Galaxy at 2.5 million light years away. And it shows up as a dot for most people. And it contains a lot of stars. Okay, So it has a lot of light sources in it. And because of the angle being very, very fine, it appears much brighter just because all the photons that we do get are from a narrow beam, not directed at us. It just simply that we're running into them and we're able to see it because we happen to be there to be able to pick them up and absorb them. That light dies in our eyes. the most distant individual star we can see is a supergiant that's 100,000 times brighter than the sun, not millions, but it's 40, excuse me, 4,000 light years away only. We can't really see very far, so this technically confirms it, but it's still 4,000 light years. 200 light years is not a hard stretch. Many of the long distance stars you see in the sky are actually galaxies full of stars, and they only appear to be a single dot because our rod the light detector in our eye is like, you know, looking at my face, but the rod's this big, so it's just a dot. I mean, and the thing is, what if it's a single dot out here and the rod's this big? It's still detecting it. It's detecting the number of photons hitting it. And again, six of them hitting seems very bright. That's a, a ratio of one to six from dead bang black to six. And then our eyes accommodate, or it counts up the number of times it's gone over brightness. Our eyes compensate. That's very bright in a darkened room, and it's a subjective view, and blah, blah, blah. The sun is 8.3 light minutes away and dumps a kilowatt over a square yard or a square meter. We can round it off. 
obviously a star further and further away is going to drop less. But there's a certain amount of light level from a single photon where it can't drop lower. It has to run into something. And in the vastness of space, with trillions and trillions of photons coming off of this screen right now, it's acceptable that one or two might hit your eye from a star 4,000 light years away. If it isn't to you, that's fine. But it seems a bit of a stretch to say stars can't be a million times brighter than the sun or that we can't see further away than somebody wants to believe. Some people out there want there to be limits on the universe and then bitch when I say there's a limit on human behavior or reality. Over here we have reality that tells us some things don't seem to have any real limits because we can't detect them, and some things have hard limits we've run into like the speed of light. In Wu Peddler world, they flip that. They decide the speed of light can't be a limitation, but some things have to be limited. And in the Wu, Wu, Wu Peddler world, when they want to prove a point, they create limits that nobody has ever seen or has a reason for. So the person who posted the comment, it, it'll be on this channel or another one, seems to have posted the axiomatic statement that if something's 200 light years away and it's a bright light source, there's no way it can technically be bright enough for us to see it. It can't happen. Well, it's 4,000 light years away uh, for a single star that we can see, but then again, there could be another star that's much bigger that's going to pop into existence and blast itself into the brightness world and may light up the sky like the star of Bethlehem. That kind of things happen. And it could be a massively further distance. Entire galaxies could be suddenly swallowed up by an insta instantly forming black hole that we don't know about and suck in all the material and create a blast of energy and cause um, a gamma ray burst that would light up the back e through the back of your head, your eyeballs. Set setting a limit on a star. Setting a limit on the universe, the heavens. Uh, I find that a bit of a stretch. When people say that we can't have any limit on something I don't want a limit on, but we have to have a limit on something I want to have it on. Limits are something we discover, and usually we will find out we're wrong about them, but we can use them as a guidepost or a thumbnail sketch of reality. Deciding you don't want limits on one thing or another, and you want, and you, you know, if you want limits that will conform to your belief system, that's fine, but that doesn't change the rest of us having to deal with the real world, and it's setting limits for us. The human eye, like film, like a CCD imager, can detect things simply because it can. And we judge the distances not by the brightnesses of the light, but by other things like uh, looking at the sky when we're on one side of the orbit of the around the sun and then the other and detecting that the star patterns do this kind of thing. So we're able to determine there's some depth of field to detect, like your eyes can, or at least your eyes can, mine screwed up. We use our solar system as a giant observatory, and we're able to detect that we fooled ourselves in the past, and we'd rather not do it anymore, about how close or how far away things are. And some people don't like that because it makes the universe uncomfortably large or uncomfortably small, and they decide to flip it on its head. This isn't something I have to respect, but it isn't something that I have to be mean about. But... Again, why set a limit on how bright a star can be, and why assume that photons actually have to completely decay just based on the inverse square idea? Again, that affects that's mostly affecting waveform. Photons respond to it after a certain point, however, it, they don't. This is something that can be tested in a room, or, well, actually a mine shaft, but that's the only test I could find. Uh, that's about it. So, is there a limit on how far light can travel in space if it's virtually nothing but a vacuum? No. And then, of course, the person brings up that it can't be a vacuum for some reason. Again, Taylor making the universe's rules so that they make it to where you don't have to believe that maybe you're wrong about things doesn't really work. That's not how we progress. We find out we're wrong about things every day. Demanding a level of rationality from everybody isn't something I'm here to do. I'm just pointing out that this doesn't seem to be a good argument to say that you can't have a, light, a star 200 light years away simply because it couldn't possibly be bright enough to, sign, to be seen. That's, that doesn't make sense. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. Goodbye.